Spidey gets himself an upgrade. Here's your look at the new Diamond Select. This is the Avengers Infinity War Iron Spider. As the Avengers and their allies have continued to protect the world from threats too large for any one hero to handle, a new danger has emerged from the cosmic shadows. Thanos, a despot of intergalactic infamy. His goal is to collect all six Infinity Stones, artifacts of an unimaginable power, and use them to inflict his twisted will on all of reality. Everything the Avengers have fought for has led up to this moment. The fate of Earth and existence itself have never been so more uncertain. This fully articulated 7-inch scale action figure of Spider-Man is based on his appearance in Avengers Infinity War and features 16 points of articulation. The figure was also sculpted by Gentle Giant Studios. To get this review underway, we're going to first figure out how tall the Iron Spider is. You'll notice right now that I'm not measuring to the tops of his additional mechanical arms, just because you can dictate where you want to put that on the figure. So I'm actually only going to measure it to the top of his head. I think we'll firmly plant the measurements right there, sitting the figure at 6.7 inches in height, which in centimeters, answering the cries to the mob, Whoa, we just missed warp. We went right past it. There we go. 17, 17 centimeters is the Iron Spider. Sadly for the Iron Spider, he doesn't come with any other accessories but some interchangeable hands. Would have been cool if he had come, in, come with a diorama, at the very least at the side maybe of that spinning ship that the Iron Spider latches onto, or Peter latches onto before he eventually gets this costume. But he doesn't come with anything other than some interchangeable hands. We'll look at those right now. Of course, web shooting hands are always the tried and true go-to for any figure from any company producing Spider-Man figures. And yes, the Iron Spider does come with his fair share of web shooting hands. Moving further from that, he also has a pair of gripping hands. And then sadly, that'd be the reminder to us that he doesn't come with any swinging webs of any size. Can't catch thieves of just like flies. Look out, here comes the Spider-Man. Uh, yes, even though he doesn't have the means to, well, he has the means, he just doesn't have the supply of webbing to hold on to. Perhaps there is gonna be a Disney Store exclusive that's gonna give Peter some webbing. In the meantime, we just have some gripping hands. And last but certainly not least, last but certainly not least, he also comes with a pair of punching hands. Just, just fists, just a bunch of fists. So he actually comes with a total of eight hands. I know you just counted off six, but don't forget, he's also got ones located into the socket sections of his forearms. There they are right there. Those are kind of like the latching on wall crawling hands, if you will. One way to display the figure, certainly in case you wanted to go that route. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's that's all the accessories that he has, sadly. Do bear with me. Do give me one second. I'll certainly be right back. My reasoning for my departure also comes from the fact I just realized, changing out the hands earlier, that the gauntlet fell off of Spider-Man. This is a, certainly a fixable solution. I'm just gonna slide that back onto his arm. I didn't even realize, oh boy, that would have been disastrous. I didn't realize it had fallen off until we were looking at the hands. Sort of paid off in such a way, I'm sure many people would have said, hey, wait a minute, you're missing a gauntlet on the other arm. Yes, you would be absolutely correct. So let's have a look at the Spider-Man figure as a whole. Pretty decent, I have to admit. It does have a few little things to it we could certainly talk about. I guess the big elephant in the room is probably the thing that you are noticing right off the bat. It's the fact that his arms, these additional mechanical arms that he has in the movie, aren't quite the same color as they were in the movie. Instead of actually giving them gold arms, Diamond Select instead opted to give him a combination of red and blue arms with slightly a little bit more noticeable uh, yellow sockets here in which the arms hinge back and forth. Now we're not certainly, I'm not certainly at least gonna fault Diamond Select for this. 
some, sometimes, sometimes it comes to the point where when companies are producing figures, they know well in advance the artwork, the concept artwork for what these figures are based from. It is very well possible that Diamond Select, when they originally got concept artwork for what Iron Spider would look like in the film, maybe he did actually have these colored arms. They produced, of course, the figure based on that, realizing then quickly later that the studio opted to give him gold arms instead. So that's probably what has happened right here. I can't imagine that they've simply just taken luxuries on their own part and decided instead of giving him all gold arms like he should really have, instead we're going to give him the metallic red and the blue. So we're not going to, I'm not going to really fault necessarily because I don't really know the full story behind the reasoning for why these arms are the way that they are. One thing I can tell you though is that the arms are sitting a little on the loose side. Some a little bit, a little bit worse than others, but it's unfortunately these types of hinges that they've used. Uh, they're notorious for getting loose real fast and unfortunately things like the the mechanical arms on poor Spider-Man here, uh, they've already started developing looseness. I suppose I could probably just spray that down. I'm trying to think of what the current remedies are. Many people mention floor polish as the means to stiffen up joints. There's the tried and true go-to of, uh, I guess I could kind of take those apart and maybe add like a layer of nail polish or something to that. So uh, I'll leave it with me. Leave it with me. Leave it with me. I'll see if I can figure out a possible proper means of getting these arms to be a little bit more stiffer because i mean to be honest they do sit really really loose so like really that's the only problems that i have with this particular figure one of which being of course the coloring and then second of which to that yeah you can see that the arms are really really loose and that's i mean this is not a figure that has been sitting on a shelf for years no not something that kids have been picking up and playing with excessively these are this is a figure that i've just just picked up just picked up at my local comic book store and as you can see yeah it's it's always this type of peg as well this hinge joint that always becomes problematic down the road with becoming excessively loose and as you can see it's already started to happen as for the figure itself, I have to say, fine work. Fine work by Diamond Select with what they've done here with Iron Spider. One thing consistent with this particular figure, even comparing it to the Iron Spider from the folks over at Hot Toys, is at least they kept the mediums the same. Hot Toys, if you saw my review of it, of course used a kind of vinyl for the material on the, the majority of his outfit while keeping the top of his head all plastic. A big no-no, unfortunately. Here, though, with uh, Diamond Select, what they've done, of course, they've just molded this whole thing in plastic and painted, painted it accordingly. The metallic, uh, the outcome, though, the metallic red looks quite nice. There are a few little areas. I can't tell whether the paint has chipped off or it just really wasn't fully painted on the mask. But there are some little visible specks here in which you can see that the paint has chipped off. Other than that, though, I mean, the paint's pretty clean. Areas such as elbows are always problematic when it comes to moving those back and forth because if something has been painted on that hinge, you bet your bottom dollar that that's probably going to start flaking off. So far, so good. I haven't had any real problems to speak of in which the paint has started to flake off. A uh, little flex here and there, yes, that's of course, that's bound to happen. But uh, so far, I haven't had too many problems with uh, f paint flaking. Always a big problem right there. Uh, the, the colors that they went with, the metallic blue, the metallic red, and of course the gold, also in the metallic category, all bounce together quite well to give you a fully finished Spider-Man. I would have loved also if this could have been just simply a fully removable piece, appliance that you could have just peeled right off, taken the back torso off, if you opted just to have your Spider-Man without the arms. Nine times out of ten, I'm sure most collectors that are picking this guy up for themselves are likely going to be picking him up with the intent of displaying him with the arms anyways, but it just sort of certainly would have been nice to have something as a removable appliance that you could have just taken right off, put to the side, and then decide later if you want to revisit the idea of putting that back onto Spider-Man. It's got some great panel lining, I must say, none of which has really been panel lined with black. Instead, sort of just keeping letting the mold do what it needs to do. You can see all these cool little circuited circuitry sort of paneling there all on his legs. Must say, I also like the blue that they went with as well. It's sort of a really dark blue. Camera almost even wants to pick it up a little bit lighter than what I'm seeing in person. It almost in person looks a little bit more like a purplish blue than the blue that we're seeing through camera. I'm seeing this through the camera as well. 
Uh, like I said, no real issues necessarily with paint. I do have one little splotch. I would feel like omitting that would be just improper. So I'll mention that there's a little bit of gold paint. Now the flaking on the head, the little paint splotch right there, and whatever other imperfections you may spot on your figure may very well be something that you may have to own yourself. It not be something that every single figure picking this up in the stores will have that exact same splotch of gold and that exact same placement of the paint flaking on the top of Spider-Man's head there. Overall, though, I'm pretty happy, I must say, with the figure. Also digging the fact that they do give peg holes on the undersides of his feet, but that's not really something that's new to Diamond Select. Right from day one, they've been smart enough to know that many collectors will likely want to pose people figures and specifically spider-man here in dynamic poses at the very least you could do the collectors a solid by incorporating peg holes on the undersides of their feet and while that seems so obvious some companies like i said don't do that diamond select have been doing that right from day one and oh so love them for it let's have a look at this guy's posability his head rotates all the way around it hinges up and down as well and he also has a full ball joint take note posers no, not those types of posers. Those that love posing their figures. You'd be able to get a full range of motion in his upper torso. Equally so, he also has a lower torso ball joint. The arms hinge out. You can rotate the arms all the way around. He has a swivel on the bicep, a double hinge happening on the elbow, and you can also rotate the hands. Again, depending on which hands you want to go with. Legs split out via a ball joint. You can see it right there. There's one. There's the second one right there. He has an upper torso swivel on the top cut of his thigh, about a three-quarter cut on the thigh, double hinge happening on the knee, and then you also have the hinge on the foot, allowing the foot rocking back and forth. No, sadly, Virginia, there is no Santa Claus. Sadly, as well, there is no rotating peg on the, on the ankle, so you can't move the foot back and forth. Kind of wish it could have been necessarily the case. That's, again, one little stumbling block for this figure, but overall pretty, like I said, like I had said, I'm pretty happy with how this figure turned out. Uh, simply for the case of the, the arms not being the proper color, I suppose just a little bit of gold paint, a paint brush, and a little bit of time on my hands, I could easily fix that up, remedy that lickety split, and at least, at the very least, the arms would be movie accurate colors. Yes, I suppose pivoting ankles certainly could have come in handy with fixing the problems of having Spider-Man standing properly. Rocking the ankles certainly would allow a better footing for standing up the figure, but you can still get him in some pretty cool looking poses. I just wish the arms could have held their own. They're sadly just a case where they're dropping down. In fact, actually, the top arm you'll see here in Final Looks has fallen just down to the point where I'm using the bottom arm and just reversing it around. I'll probably go in and take some shoe polish or whatever the current remedy is to fix figures like this that have loose joints, and my Spider-Man should be as good as new. Or one better, I may even just outright paint the arms, as I had alluded to near the end of this review, in that metallic goal to make them at least movie accurate colors, and that probably will in the process stiffen up those joints anyways. Either way, there is a few little fixing points to Spider-Man, otherwise though I'm pretty happy with how this figure turned out. The fact that we are also getting gripping hands leads me to believe that maybe we will get ourselves a Disney Store exclusive, possibly with one Tom Holland being an interchangeable head swap. You'll never know. Or if we do know, rest assured I probably will be picking that one up and giving it a review if such a thing eventually comes to surface. In the meantime, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, some good news is you should be able to find the Iron Spider now, along with some new lineups, new waves of Marvel Select figures, that being including the Captain America and the Thor, also from Infinity War. Both of those, as well as Iron Spider here, should now be rotating, circulating around on the pegs at the comic book store. So if you are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, good news, they are available easy just like that just go in your store if they don't have them you can go to a different store and if they don't have them well you can always order them on ebay but i certainly would not pay scalpers prices when these are so easily available now in local comic book stores either way like i said today we were having a look at the diamond select marvel select avengers infinity war and this was the iron spider nice looking figure Make sure as well, my friends, my colleagues, and even the mob, make sure you hit that little subscribe button that's just below this video if you haven't done so already. And certainly more videos will be coming soon.
stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.